They are one of the most successful programs in the history of college football. Yeah. Crimson and Cream, the guys from Norman, Oklahoma, seven national championships, almost 50 conference titles, seven Heisman Trophy winners, including the reigning Heisman Trophy winner in Kyler Murray, a program that's been known for its success with past coaches like Wilkinson, Switzer, and Stoops, and a guy that's making himself a big name. Even as we speak, we know this because the NFL wants him big time. Talking about Lincoln Riley, who has a two-year coaching record of 24-3 and and has went to the college football playoff each of his first two seasons. Yeah, not bad at all. But now they're going to be facing a squad come December 29th in the college football playoff semifinal that surpasses Oklahoma as far as success. As the announcer from Rocky II might describe them, they are the champions who need no introduction anywhere in the civilized world. Of course, talking about Alabama. The guys from Tuscaloosa, more national championships than anybody else, a ton of SEC championships, the two greatest coaches to have ever coached the game, Paul Bear Bryant and the present one in Nick Saban, who's won half a dozen national championships, including five with the Tide. It's a program that won the whole thing last year, and they've been number one since August of this year, undefeated and rarely challenged. Alabama, yes, they are the standard by which all the other college football programs in the country are measured. The winner of Saturday night, of course, in the Orange Bowl will take on either Notre Dame or Clemson, who will play earlier on the 29th in the Cotton Bowl. The winners will meet January 7th in Santa Clara, California, for the national championship for all the marbles. And look, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, for, for Oklahoma, it may not be an impossible job to try to beat Alabama on Saturday, but it's going to be very difficult to do because, let's face it, it's stating the obvious, Oklahoma's going to be facing a, a football program that's better than they are. Okay, uh, the, the, the talent speaks for itself. But one great thing about college athletics, it's not like the World Series or the Stanley Cup or – it's not like the NBA Finals where it's the best four out of seven and you win. This is a one-game thing, and it's not always the best team that wins. It's the team that plays best that sometimes comes out on top, and you're hoping, like Wesley, not, like Wesley Snipes said from the movie White Man Can't Jump, you know, sometimes even the sun shines on a dog's ass, and that's what you're hoping for if you're a Sooner fan, that maybe, just maybe, something special can happen on Saturday where Bama's not at their best and Oklahoma offensively will be, and that the Sooner defense can, you know, maybe pull out a shit burger or something for the Alabama offense, and we see an Oklahoma defense that we haven't seen the likes of against a quality offense all year long. So there's our 14-point underdog Saturday night. Very difficult task, but not impossible. Before we break down the game, um, you might remember, if you've watched my videos on a regular basis, a video that I shot back on December the 2nd. That was the day that ESPN made the announcements for the college football playoff. Now, we carried it live, and when they announced the fourth and final team that made the playoff, which was number four, Oklahoma, I was like a kid in the Kansas store. I was happy, ecstatic, that they were able to outlast Georgia and Ohio State in the final playoff standings and get a shot at Alabama. You might be thinking to yourself, why would you be so happy that the Sooners are going to be a huge underdog and probably get the seat of their pants kicked by those guys from Tuscaloosa, Alabama? Here's my thinking, okay? And I'll try to take your side as much as possible. I would rather my team play in the college football playoff, be a huge underdog, and have very little shot at winning than to win the Camping World Bowl or the Alamo Bowl or the Holiday Bowl or the Liberty Bowl or the Toilet Bowl. No disrespect to those bowl games, by the way, with the exception of the Toilet Bowl because it stinks. Uh Anyway... I'd rather my team play in one of the two semifinal games, which this year is the Orange Bowl or the Cotton Bowl from Jerry World in Arlington, Texas, than to play in a lesser-tiered bowl game and have your season end and have no shot at the national championship. Let's face it, there's 64 teams in Power 5 college football. There's the Independents in BYU and Notre Dame, and congrats to Notre Dame making it to their first college football playoff. They got a tough task, though, against uh, Clemson on Saturday afternoon. Your goal, of course, is to be one of those four teams because you know something? College basketball, it's a special year if you make the Final Four but don't make, you know, but you don't make the national championship game or win the national title. It's okay. All right. It sucks to have your season in with a loss, but at least you had a chance to win the whole thing or at least play for the whole thing. I'm happier than hell that the Sooners are one of those four teams, even if they are a mammoth underdog. 
a mammoth underdog. And by the way, I'm not going to pull the reference of, well, Oklahoma beat Alabama five years ago, so they got shot this game. That was five years ago, and on one night, Trevor Knight, the OU quarterback, looked like Tom Brady and never looked like that before or since. That was a night where things fell just right for the Crimson and the Cream. Fell just right. But I don't think anybody who played in that game for Alabama or Oklahoma is playing in this one. It's been five years. So this is new blood. Of course, the stakes are much higher. And the Sooners offensively are going to need pretty close to the perfect game. And defensively, we've got to see them do things, like I said, against a quality offense, which we haven't seen all year. Let's break down the game. We're going to start with the OU offense. And by the way, looking at the two quarterbacks, the best two quarterbacks in the country, and Kyler Murray for the Sooners and Tua Tunga Viola for the Tide, you know, in the history of college football, which has gone on for decades and decades, no quarterback has ever finished a season with a passer efficiency rating of higher than 200. That's pretty high. Right now, Kyler Murray's at 205. Tunga Viola, he's at 202. So this is an historic matchup, okay? You know, both these quarterbacks won most of the national quarterback hardware. We know that Tunga Viola is the Maxwell winner. We know, of course, about Kyler Murray becoming Oklahoma's seventh Heisman Trophy winner. When Oklahoma has the ball, though, I'm going to tell you this. Kyler Murray can't do it all by himself for Oklahoma to win this game. He can't. He's going to have to have that offensive line, which is the best in the game. He's going to have to have them be very up to their game. And it's an Alabama defensive line featuring Quinnen Williams, by the way, the best defensive tackle in all college football, who's very, very disruptive against the run. You better believe in the backfield as well, trying to get to the quarterback. Sooners have to win this battle against Alabama's front four because I'll be willing to bet you, at least early on, you will see four-man rushes by the tide and maybe not so much blitzes, but try to make Kyler Murray throw against more um, defensive coverage. The Sooner offense has to be aware, too. The receivers, you know, Marquise Brown, who I believe will play and will have an impact in this game. C.D. Lamb, I think, will have a big impact. Cal Katera, the tight end, should be affected. Lee Morris, all he does is catch touchdowns. You have his services as well. This Alabama secondary, though, they play pretty tight. They'll play pretty physical. They'll be on top of you. So Sooners have to be aware of that. The running game for the Sooners, though, is what makes everything go in motion. And you notice against Texas in the Big 12 championship game, the Sooners did not have their most successful rushing attack of the year. Texas did a decent job against that Sooner run, and it took everything for the Sooners in that fourth quarter to pull away from a very determined Texas team. This Alabama defensive line is the best that OU has seen all year long. you got the number one offense in college football in the Sooners and the number nine defense in the country in Alabama. It will all come down to those guys up front to see if they can handle a very dominant SEC defense and I believe that the Sooners will have a lot of success because I don't think it's just going to be Kyler Murray. you got a lot of Trey Sermon, who should be the healthiest. He's been in the wild, seeing that the Sooners have had that 28-day layoff, as well as Kennedy Brooks, who's just gotten better and better throughout the season, especially the second half of the year. But you got to stay away from those turnovers, and the Sooners have done, for the most part, a pretty good job of that. Rarely do they fumble, and not too often will Kyler Murray throw an interception. So they got that going for them. Now, the Sooner defense... Gosh, 93rd in the country, second worst defense in the country against the pass. That's 129th if you're keeping score at home. The Alabama's going to score points in this game. And they're going to score a lot of them. So what hope in hell does Oklahoma have on the defensive side? I think you kind of have to do what you did against Texas, an offense that wasn't as good as what they'll face on Saturday night. Alabama, by the way, number two in the country in total offense. What I'm talking about you got to throw stuff that you've hardly done all year long or haven't done, period. you got to roll the dice. you got to take chances, and you got to blitz, especially from the outside. It worked against Texas. Remember, halfway through the fourth quarter of the Big 12 championship game, the Sooners just hanging on to a three-point lead. Texas had the ball. Corner blitz by Trey Brown. Paid off. Ellinger never saw him coming. Safety, oh, you got two points, but more importantly, got the ball back and was able to march it downfield in the game with the Grant Calcaterra touchdown. That put the game out of reach. 39-27 game set match to the Sooners. But it was set up by that blitz. And it's not just that you're trying to get negative yards against Alabama when you roll the dice. Yes, it may not work, but you know what? What doesn't work is just being sitting ducks, just sitting back there, just not doing anything at all except trying to prevent Bama from making big plays. you got to take chances because it not only will present lost yardage possibilities, it could be momentum twisters as well, especially if you can force a turnover. 
The Sooners this year have not generated very many takeaways, and Bama rarely gives the ball up. That's another reason why I think the so-called experts don't give Oklahoma much of a shot. you got to do things that you haven't done all year, and you got to be able to throw the element of surprise against Bama. At times it may not work, but you know what? It just might. And Tug of Viola, he's going to play. You know, he's, he's recovered from the surgery, from what I've heard quite nicely. But how effective is he going to be on his feet? Maybe not 100%. And, and by the way, I know about Marquise Brown. We know he'll play. Probably won't be 100%, but he'll play too. What I'm trying to tell you is, if Tug of Viola is not fully healthy, that could very well affect his foot planning and throwing passes. Maybe those passes sail a little bit too high. Maybe He's inaccurate, which has been a rarity for him this year. And maybe that's one of the breaks that Sooners could use in a game like this. Like I said, Bama's going to score a lot of points, but you got to win a few battles. you got to help the offense out if you are the Oklahoma Sooners. You're going to be facing speedy receivers. Jerry Judy, the best receiver in all of college football, uh, the Blitnikoff winner, a damn good running back in Damian Harris, a veteran, and a very underrated tight end, by the way, in Irv Smith Jr. for Alabama. To say that the Sooners have a lot of, to deal with, well, no shit. <laughs> but you got to win a few of those battles, and maybe that will be enough to keep you in the game. And the Tide, you give them credit for how they were able to handle the fourth quarter because they hadn't had too many close games this year, in fact, hardly any. And they've only failed to cover the spread twice all year long out of 13 games. That was against A&M, and then, of course, that was against Georgia, in which the Tide just got past the Bulldogs in the SEC title game. So they're going to be facing a speedy, very physical Alabama offense, and maybe the Sooners, even though they'll give up a lot of points, maybe they can win some battles. The only chance you have because the Sooners offense can't do everything. Final thoughts on this game. Look, I believe the Sooner offense will have success. It will be the toughest defense that they faced, but this Sooner offense is not just damn good. They're historic good, putting up unreal numbers. And Bama is not used to playing offenses like this on this level. So expect Oklahoma to score points. However, if you put a gun to my head right now and made me pick a winner, I will ask everybody out there, especially Sooner fans, one question. If you can't stop Texas Tech, if you can't stop Oklahoma State, if you can't stop West Virginia, and take it a step further, if you can't stop Kansas, who sucks, big green donkey balls, giving up 40 points to the Jayhawks, how you can be able to contain or stop the number two offense in all college football in Alabama? If you know and have a better answer than what I came with as far as taking chances, please put it in the suggestion box. I'm not trying to be a pessimist. I'm just being a realist. I've got Bama winning the game 52-40. to Sooners will cover the spread, but the Oklahoma defense, when it comes to facing the best offenses, don't stand much of a shot. And until something changes, I, uh, I've got to go based upon what I've seen and what Oklahoma is about to face. It's a great year for Oklahoma, and hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully it's reverse psychology. And don't forget, I'll have my post game of Oklahoma-Alabama um, live as soon as the game is over. Okay, I'm going to try to have it live. 7 o'clock Oklahoma time kickoff for Oklahoma-Alabama. Winner to take on Notre Dame or Clemson. Boomer Sooner, happy holidays to everybody.